Hello, my name is Steven, and uh, today in this video I am going to explain how to use uh, Cadence Sigurdy Aurora within the PCB layout tool uh, in order to do an impedance analysis on a board which has already been routed. So what is the purpose of this analysis? Uh, during routing and design of a board, we have certain traces which uh, are required to have certain trace width or geometry in order to meet a certain specific characteristic impedance, uh, most commonly 50 ohm for single-ended or 100 ohm for differential, uh, but typically other values as well, depending on the protocol. Uh, and uh, we want to make sure after the board's been routed that all of these traces have the correct uh, impedance as designed. So that impedance may be something that the uh, lead engineer for the board has specified or the fabricator has specified in a stack up document. So as a result, the first thing we need to check is to make sure that the stack up is defined correctly in the layout editor. So we're going to just quickly open up the layer stack uh, cross-section editor. We're going to verify that all the layers have the correct thicknesses. So we look here, uh, we've got uh, thicknesses defined, we've got materials defined, we've got dielectric constant of the material uh, set right here. So if everything looks good, let's get back to our board. Uh, one thing I didn't mention, this board that we'll be doing the analysis on is one of the uh, BeagleBone board layouts. Uh, it's an open source project, uh, but it is a board uh, design in which I have uh, inserted a deliberate uh, mistake in the routing, something that we can look for as we do our impedance analysis. So the first step, step is going to just be to open up the workflow manager here, and we will come over to the impedance workflow. And for this particular analysis, I'm going to do a directed group between the processor and one of the DDR uh, components. So we'll go ahead and create a directed group here. Processor is U4 in this case. The DDR component I'm going to uh, be measuring between is U11. We will look at the uh, preview of the directed groups. We've got some diff pairs. We've got some single-ended signals. OK, so we'll go ahead and click Create for the directed group and click OK. Uh, we can check the analysis options. The only an option uh, here is to determine whether or not we want to model coplanar uh, ground uh, in the impedance, and we're just going to leave that off for now, and we'll go ahead and kick off the analysis. All right, once our analysis is complete, we can take a quick look here. We're going to, uh, let's start out looking at just uh, an impedance vision. We're just going to pop this uh, pop this open. We're going to set it to differential mode here real quick, which will allow us to look at both our pairs and our uh, diff pairs and our single-ended traces. And let's just look briefly. We've got some traces on the top layer here, a 100 ohm differential pair, some signals routed at uh, 54 ohms up here. And maybe we'll pop down to a signal layer. And we've got 40 ohm single-ended traces, typical for a DDR interface. We've got more 40 ohm and then a uh, diff pair here at 85 ohm. And we'll hop down to this layer real quick. And look at that, we've got more, 40 ohm. And uh, another 85 ohm differential pair, perhaps something on an adjacent layer, uh, causing a, a slight uh, discontinuity here. Uh, there we go, we've got a little bit of a split um, on the layer directly above this one. And we can see that as a result, the impedance goes from 40 ohms right here, 39.4 up uh, to 49.3, right? So that's something we may want to uh, investigate or uh, model if that's something that we need to verify uh, performance over that split plane. Let's keep going here. And what do we got on layer 10? All right, on layer 10, looks like we've got some traces here that are at uh, 54.6 for the entire uh, length of the trace. That seems maybe a little out of line for a DDR interface. Same with this diff pair here, a 61 ohm differential pair. All right, let's just take a quick look at the bottom layer. Looks about the same as the top. All right, well, it looks like we might need some further investigation on a little bit uh, of our traces. So let's take a look at a table. So we can pop open the table here. And one of the nice things about the table is that we can see the maximum, minimum, and typical impedance of the trace, but we can also see which percentage of the trace 
is showing uh, the maximum, minimum, and, and typical impedance in terms of length. So if you have a small breakout area where perhaps the impedance jumps from its uh, intended 40 ohms up to 55 or 60 for a, a very small amount of, uh, of distance as you're breaking out from a component, well, maybe that's just fine, and we can characterize that based, we can see that based on a, a short uh, number here in the maximum or the minimum. So let's see, what do we have? Let's, uh, let's sort by the minimum. So if we look, we've got a lot of traces where 94% of the length is also 94% of, is routed at the minimum and at the typical. So the minimum and typical here are both 34.9. That seems just fine, right? <clears throat> so nothing here in the minimum category uh, is showing anything significant. Even here where traces are a little bit uh, higher impedance, we see that the minimum is a few percent of the length. So let's do the same thing for the maximum. What we can see here, we've got some traces where the maximum impedance is 96% uh, of the entire trace, even though the minimum, 48, 48 ohm here, you know, these, these traces, maybe they're supposed to be 40 ohm. We know they're supposed to be that because it's our DDR interface, but we can see that 96% of the length is routed at 54 ohms, right? So if we take a quick look, what we can see is this is right there on layer 10, uh, just as we saw when we were looking at the overlay. So it looks like perhaps we need to take a, a better look at, at our layer 10 routing. Look in a little bit more detail here. And what we can see is that these traces were routed with a width of 2 mil. And we can see that uh, from this pop-up. So 2 mil is probably too small to be even fabricated, so perhaps there was a, a mistake in the constraints generation uh, that defined what width we should use for this DDR interface on layer 10, but the most important thing here is we caught an issue before a board was sent out for fabrication. We can correct it, uh, and we can save ourselves the money of having to do a respin if this interface were not going to work. So thank you very much for watching this video, and uh, please reach out if you have any questions.